G'day, Ben from Duck Playing Chicken here with another build series. Something a little bit different from my usual affair. This is a figure kit of the Machina Minch from Metropolis. So Metropolis was a uh, film made back in, was it 1925, 1927, I think it was. So quite an old film. And if you're into sci-fi and you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend uh, checking it out. There's lots of sort of remastered versions of it floating around and it's it's worth looking at. Yes, it's very dated because it was done a long time ago, but it's got some sci-fi themes in it that I think are still still relevant today. And this is kind of the iconic, you know, the iconic scene from the film. It's kind of what everyone thinks of when they uh, think of the film Metropolis. And so the Machina Mencher or a robot character could sort of uh, take on the the likeness of a human character in the film and so unfortunately you don't get to see this sort of robot form for very long in the film it sort of changes to a female actor later who looks very human um, so it's a bit of a shame you don't get to see this too much in the film however there are some other really interesting visuals from the sort of cityscapes and also the the machines that all the people are working on of course they're all sort of you know like steam engine like and everything but it's some interesting ideas so definitely worth checking out back to the kit this kit is uh made by x plus now i haven't built anything from them uh previously and i believe they make another figure kit i think it's of vampirella so i'm not entirely sure Anyway, this is going to be just uh, starting off by a bit of an unboxing. So I actually haven't looked in here yet. And this is literally you're seeing it at the same time I am. So it looks like everything's bagged up. And I should say this is what they call the display model version of this kit. There's two sort of versions of it. And I believe the display model version of it, it's actually pre-painted. So you can see... All the parts here are painted in gold. Now, I suspect I'll probably have to end up repainting it anyway. And there was, I bought this from Hobby Link Japan. There was no difference in the price of whether you bought the display model version or the other version. So I'm not entirely sure, you know, why they had the, um, why they've got the two different ones. But anyway, what I'll do is I might get all these bits out of the bag and then we can sort of have a look through them. I've taken all the pieces out of the bags and so that we can have a better look at them. So here we've obviously got uh, one of the legs um, and we have a duplication of that or a duplication of the legs for the other one and then it looks like the feet are sort of uh, two parts for each foot. Looking at the body itself so the front and the back. It doesn't appear to be any sort of flash or uh, anything like that. There are a few sort of minor imperfections, but the quality of the kit looks pretty good. It looks like sink marks are the main, the main kind of uh, issue. Here we've got sort of the main torso. Detail looks nice and sharp. The, the back and we've got that sort of iconic uh, iconic face and the, uh, the hands part of the arms a few detail pieces and it looks like we've got more and parts for the legs some of these Really small detail parts are going to uh, really pop on this kit, I think. So that's all the sort of gold, uh, and in this case it's gold painted. I suspect the non-display model version is probably just all in that uh, you know, non-metallic uh, plastic I'm not entirely sure if someone has a non display version of this kit then uh, please let me know in the comments the other thing you get is the throne that um, 
the character sits on. So the throne's made up of get this sort of beautiful base plate, which um, already has a metallic you know, metropolis listed in it. And let's see, how does this work? And it looks like it's a sort of floating, like a floating chair. So that's kind of nice. I like that. Yeah, let's see if I can work out how it sort of fits. And I was just guessing here. I haven't actually looked at the instructions yet. But um, yeah, maybe something like that. I'm not sure. And the other thing that's a nice detail is the inscription. Uh, on the back of the uh, back of the throne there and I'm sorry I do not uh, I do not speak German so I don't I can't read that out but I believe in the movie if I remember right like this inscription was above the throne I don't think it was actually on the throne itself or on the chair but that's a nice touch and part of the Part of the throne uh, they have these pieces that are, I guess, they're standoffs or something. I'm not entirely sure whether they're supposed to be lights. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have a look at the instructions in a minute. So that's all the pieces. There's no decals in this kit, uh, but of course you do get instructions, and I kind of like the format of these instructions where it just looks like a single page. I kind of like that. Um, I actually really quite like it's got a very 1920s aesthetic to it to the color of the paper and just the way it's sort of put together uh, so it's got written instructions you know follow step by step you know like uh, step one for example assemble body halves four and seven um, you know it actually looks all pretty straightforward so I think the biggest kind of challenge in this kit is going to be dealing with the seams. And I think in some cases the seams might actually be, um, you know, you could actually sort of have them as part of the, the aesthetic of the, um, of the figure. So until I start putting it together, of course I'll dry fit everything before I start gluing. But you can see some of those sort of detail bits and yeah, they go as well yeah so it looks like okay these clear bits yeah they just look like standoffs so uh, I don't think they're supposed to have lights in them or anything I don't remember anything like that from the film it has been a while since I've sort of uh, seen it uh, okay and then they've got a painting guide so yeah for these standoffs they say they should be transparent or uh, black silver black silver glossy finish for the throne I don't think I actually need to paint the throne I think it's got this kind of beautiful sheen to it and it almost looks kind of metallic so I don't think I'm actually going to do anything with the throne apart from assembling it that'll be, uh, that'll be a nice change and um, of course the figure is just all gold um, there are no other colors so you can definitely sort of see you can see c3po in this uh, particular character you know you can definitely see the inspiration uh, where c3po came from uh, oh yes okay so here's um, just an ad for the vampirella character so they also do a kit I believe it's in the same scale now I think this should be a fairly straightforward build. I think I'm you know, going to try and get all this in one video and we'll see how we go. I started assembling the figure and I've come across a few issues. So first of all the painting on this kit, although it's relatively smooth I have come across some areas where the paint application hasn't been really flash. So I'm going to see if this comes up on camera. So you can see there's sort of a bit of a, I don't know whether it's a, uh, a bit of a pooling of the paint they've applied or something like that, but it's just a little bit untidy. I've, I've decided that what I'm going to have to do is strip the paint, uh, just because the glue won't stick to the paint particularly well. 
and I'm going to end up having to putty everything anyway. So I'm going to strip the paint and that way I should have a better, better surface for cleaning up those gaps and for sanding everything down. Now, don't get me wrong, the kit so far, the sculpt of it is awesome. Like the, uh, the proportions and everything are fantastic. I think it's, you know, it's a really good, um, good representation of the character from the film. But yeah, because they've painted over the parts, all the um, pegs and everything are very tight to fit and it's just going to make dealing with these seams a bit harder. Now I have no idea what sort of paint they have used on these on this kit. So what I've done is, and whenever you're experimenting with stripping paint off a model and you're not sure what paint was used, always try to use a bit that you don't care about. So whether that's you know a bit of the sprue or maybe you know if you look at miniatures and, or something it might be the base or you know pick something that's not going to be um you know too affected if it makes the plastic brittle or or whatever so for checking to see whether this is a lacquer base paint what i've done is i've cut off a piece of the sprue and i'm using isopropyl alcohol so i believe i'm going to have to leave this sit in here for quite some time i'm going to leave it overnight and have a look at it maybe take to it with a with a toothbrush and and see if the paint comes off so that will be soaking in ipa now in case it's acrylic which i don't think it is i suspect it's a lacquer based paint because it's reasonably hardy it's not sort of scratching off that easy so um, i think i'll be going down the path of um, trying to strip lack of paint but if it's an acrylic based one what I've done is I've again taken a bit of the sprue and this is just my home brew um, acrylic paint cleaner that I've done video on previously so I'm gonna let these two soak overnight have a look at them and see what sort of paint they've used or what um, chemical will take the paint off the pieces so then I can sort of move forward it actually took quite a bit of effort to strip the paint off the pieces. I suspect that, well, I'm pretty sure it's lacquer paint they used. So the isopropyl alcohol worked to a degree. And in fact, what I had to do was soak the pieces for a couple of days in isopropyl alcohol. And then I just used an old toothbrush to sort of scrub the paint off. And to give you an idea of, um, you know, you can still see bits of the paint left on here and I mean I scrubbed and scrubbed and let this soak for quite some time but I suspect that some of this paint has etch etched right into the plastic and you can see the difference in the uh, you can see the paint obviously for the interior bits I didn't try and scrub too hard as it's not really important there so once I get a a primer down once I've sort of put the kit together it'll be interesting to see whether any of these uh, little flecks um, are actually raised or not. Now, even though I soaked it in isopropyl alcohol, what I ended up was this kind of effect where you can see this almost like white chalky substance on the, on the pieces. And I'm not actually sure where that has come from. I'm not sure if that's the way the, you know, the isopropyl alcohol uh, reacts once you sort of start air drying it but what I found I used to clean that up is to me a lacquer thinner now you probably don't want to leave your plastic pieces soaking in this stuff a it's expensive but B it's also going to um, probably affect your plastic maybe make it a little brittle so all I'm doing here is getting a little bit on a cotton bud so not very much at all now I'm going to dab the excess on a on a paper towel and so just with the cot bud damp, I'm going to rub it down and try and get that chalky residue off. The problem is I'm not entirely sure what that chalky residue will do once I put a primer over the top of it. I'm not sure if it'll sort of react, you know, to the primer in any way or anything like that. So I want to remove it just in case. I kind of figure it's safer to remove it and try and get the plastic as clean as possible. 
So I just, you know, the, uh, the cotton bud itself is not saturated. It is just damp with the lacquer thinner. But it's getting rid of that sort of chalky residue that I've sort of come across. Again, there's still flecks of paint stuck on here that I just could not scrub off. So you can sort of see like the bottom's still got a bit of that sort of chalky stuff on it and the top's a little bit better. Like all kits really until you get sort of a primer down on it to unify the surface it's a bit hard to tell what the uh, what the effect will be but if you've got the uh, display model kit I think this was called or I think it was also called the painted version of the kit and you want to strip the paint down then certainly isopropyl alcohol is the way to go you don't want to use lacquer thinner it will uh, eat into the plastic so um, isopropyl alcohol will not affect this particular plastic in any way it hasn't made it any more brittle or anything like that um, but you may need to let it soak for a couple of days before I start priming and painting any of these pieces I've taken some of the main body parts and begun to glue them together and so it's pretty rough the seam it's not the closest fit when these two halves go together so I have used a substantial amount of uh, plastic cement to kind of try and fill those gaps and then I'm just going to sand them sort of like what I've done on the arm here I've got to go through and do the rest of it now looking at the construction of it the one advantage of this kit and the way that it's sort of uh, designed is that the seams on this sort of inner body part and also on the legs isn't really that crucial as far as how clean it is and the reason for that has a lot to do with the way that the the other pieces go on and I think inherently the way the costume was designed in the film so if I put the um, you know the front uh, front part of the torso on and then the back which clips into place so you can see there's this sort of natural gap here between the front and the back piece and of course the reason for that would have been trying to get the actor into the the costume they obviously have done it sort of in two halves like that i don't know what they would have used back in the day for you know these pieces but um, they would have been done in two halves so there is a seam that sort of runs down but it's a very natural and very pronounced seam so it it makes sense it's there and as you can see on the shoulders you can't see any of the um, any of the torso parts underneath so the seam there doesn't actually matter and when we get to the legs if I sort of show uh, which is this one So this leg piece here, you can see that once again, I've sort of dealt with the seams. So I've just sanded it back. The other side I haven't done yet, so you can see how messy that is. But when we put the armor pieces, or what I'm calling the armor pieces over the top, and when these go together, it's a little bit fiddly in places. But you can see how there's a sort of natural seam there as where you could imagine the actor being strapped into these two pieces around the leg um, and so there's no real need to go overboard with dealing with the seams on the inner leg there's actually a kneecap piece as well and of course the lower leg so when you're looking at the main uh, substructure I guess of this model kit you don't have to be too too fussed with the seams. I definitely recommend gluing it. Um, it does snap together, but I recommend gluing it just because you want to sort of clamp it and make it as uh, tight fit as, as possible. So I would definitely recommend gluing. These other pieces, it appears they don't actually need to be glued, but I think I will be gluing them just to hold them in place. There is a very particular way of assembling this kit. The instructions are very sort of clear about that. And there are some issues where 
um, in some cases you're not going to be able to uh, put you know fully assemble the legs and then put them attach them to the torso without um, sort of some a bit of modification as you can see all the external what I call the external armor pieces have been primed so they're sort of ready to go onto the main uh, inner body parts and the main the inner legs so what I could do is actually assemble it I think uh, and glue it where necessary so that that way then I can go over with the gold now what I've done is for the priming I've just used SMS surface of black for the gold I didn't have a lot of choices in my uh, paint collection at the moment so I've gone with this Vallejo metal color 77.725 uh, gold which actually you know provide you mix it properly it sprays really well out of the airbrush um, so and I actually quite like the tone of the gold it's um, it's not too sort of orangey like one of the other golds I've got in my collection so I'm pretty happy with that color so let's start the assembly process now they recommend that you use a 1.2 mil uh, diameter drill to drill out some of the holes I've actually gone with a 1.5 because I want to make these holes you know as open as possible because I will be gluing these parts in so um, you know by the time you put sort of primer on pieces and the little pegs you know it might not fit properly so it's just about opening up those holes a little bit and I'm also conscious of the fact that I probably will end up scratching scratching this gold here as I put the other pieces on I don't think it's going to be an issue there's only sort of very minor parts that are going to be showing through
Okay, so I've been gluing all the parts on. Um, I was going to clean up some of these seams, but I actually don't think I'll worry about it. And the reason for that is because I want to stay true to the fact that this was a costume. Now, holding this kit while I'm actually spraying it gold is going to be a bit of a challenge. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to actually use the base that they've provided. So you can see there's two holes here. This is where the feet go in. So what I'm going to do is mask this off and this will be sort of the, the platform I can use to hang on to while I'm spraying it. So I'm just going to use some painter's tape and I'm just going to make sure I've got it well masked because nothing wrong with the paint job that's provided on the base. So I just want to make sure I retain that. Alright, there we go. The base is now completely wrapped and what I need to do is find where those two holes are. Okay, so there's one there and there's one there. And rather than sort of, you know, putting force on the, the body itself, what I could do is put the shoes in first. Alright, let's see if we can drop her in place. Yep, that looks pretty good. So you can sort of see that at least I'm going to be able to, once I glue that in place, I'm going to have some something to be able to grasp onto. So before we do that, I need to sort out some of these other fiddly pieces that need to go on. So these bits that sort of go on our ribs, they were separate pieces that got stuck on. There are a number of small uh, pieces that sort of go on her um, upper thighs. I did not realise when I was cutting those pieces out, they are actually all individually keyed. So be wary of that. You might want to keep note of the numbers of them. Just the way, <laughs> the way this thing's designed, I can't help thinking of uh, this one being Mrs. C-3PO. It's just uh, so much about it that sort of is reminiscent of, uh, reminiscent of that, uh, that droid. And of course, this one came well before Star Wars. Uh, let's see, let's do, now I think her ears are going to be tricky because uh, they're kind of made up of these, uh, it's, a, it's not super clear which way they go. Parts of the ears are on, and there's so a little. Uh, I think these little arms here, they sort of connect, uh, connect the ear part to the side of the head. Uh, I've got to make sure I've got the right ones because there's a couple of different sort of connect bits. And these are all really fiddly. These are great as something as small as those little clips that are just sort of tied all together. I'm 
just be those little seams that are the problem. If I clean them up, then I'll be good to go. And let her dry. And next, what will happen is I will, after I fix up those seams, I will paint her using this Leo Gold. And I'm just going to do it all in one hit. So the next time you see it, it should be sort of ready for the, the final assembly. Okay, the gold paint on the figure is all done. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the result. I kind of like the color of the gold. If I compare it against the original color, I've sort of hung on to the, uh, uh, one of the sprues just to sort of show you the difference. And you'll see the sprues a little bit warmer gold. Um, it's a little bit more orange. It's not so clear on camera, but it is a little bit warmer. So I think um, the color I chose, it's not the same as the color they've decided to paint the model in, but I'm still pretty happy with it. So I, I painted the figure while it was sort of standing on the base. So that way I had a way to sort of support it. But now I've got to the point where I need to undo my masking. Take these shoes off first. You'll notice there's areas on the shoes, for example, where I couldn't get the gold paint in while I was painting, but that's all right, because you, you hardly even see it. Okay. Now there are the little standoff pieces and I've already sort of put them on uh, the main base part. So I've put the standoffs on this part of the base. This is where the chair goes. So now we should be able to mount this in place. In. The throne's just made up of two parts. We have the inscription on the back. Um, I'm not going to dry brush this or anything. In. The way I'm going to display it, you're never going to see the back of the chair anyway, so but that just sits on there like that. And just a quick dry fit to make sure she still stands okay. She does, and then I can glue her down. Whoops, and then the chair falls off. So I think what I'm going to do now is glue the figure to the feet so that it's nice and uh, nice and rigid, and then it'll be on to the glamour shots. So my final thoughts on this kit are: uh, first of all, for a kit that's all painted one colour, there's actually quite a bit in it. Uh, it is a little bit fiddly in places, um, certainly the head, the back head piece doesn't seem to align properly to the, um, yeah, to the, the face part of it, but, um, and there's a couple of seams, you know, that you may want to address, like I've done them on the, the sides of the arms. So it is a little bit fiddly in places, but as far as the actual sculpt of the model thing goes, I think it's fantastic. It's a really great representation of the character from the film. And I really like the little base they provide with it as well. It sort of, you know, gives it a little bit more uh, gravitas, I think. So um, yeah, overall, pretty happy with that. I don't know if you can still, I don't think you can get these kits on Hobby Link Japan anymore, which is where I got mine but I'm sure there's other vendors out there that might uh, still be selling them, so keep an eye out for it. So until the next build series, I will catch you later.